Mary Poppins Returns is now in theaters. This is the sequel to the 1964 film called Mary Poppins, um, which starred Julie Andrews. And this sequel is a film that stars Emily Blunt in the titular role. Um, it also has Meryl Streep. Uh, Dick Van Dyke is in it for a little bit. You know, it has all these like little things. Ben Whishaw's in it. Um, a lot of a lot of British actors, which is enjoyable to see a mainstream American film have a bunch of British actors. I enjoyed that aspect about the film. And this is a film about Mary Poppins as she returns back to this family and trying to make everything right again. The question is, does lightning strike twice? Let's find out. So firstly, I'm just going to say this. The first film I enjoy, I think it is flawed. I think it has some pretty big flaws which kind of make it enjoyable, but not a perfect film the way many people think. I think it has some iconic scenes and everything. So just letting you guys know that going into it. Seeing a sequel years later, I think that some of it works. First of all, I think the costume design is brilliant. Definitely Sandy Powell's auteur work again. She is great. She always gets nominated for uh, costume design. And this is yet another film I can easily see her getting a costume design nomination. The makeup is top notch. The production value is clearly there. Um, and I think that Emily Blunt is perfect as Mary Poppins. She's very enjoyable. I honestly wish she was given more than what was in the film. The performances, for the most part, while nothing special, are enjoyable to watch. Um, and I do think that this is a film that will definitely entertain kids. With all that said, I do have to say that this film, for me personally, was very flawed. For one, Kind of like Wreck-It Ralph 2, uh, you know, Ralph breaks, breaks the internet. I think this film really doesn't have that much plot. You know, it's two hours and ten minutes, and it doesn't really have that much plot or story going for it. And look, I am all for films that are experimental. But let's face it, this is not an experimental film. This is a Disney film. You know, they're not experimenting with anything. They are just trusting the audience to want to just revisit this world and not really care about the fact that most of this... You've seen already. You've seen not just in other films, but you've seen in this world before. And there are many different scenes that are just so pointless. You know, they don't lead to really anything. And and I'm saying that as someone that usually can appreciate if a story is trusting the audience, but I feel as though this story wasn't trusting the audience. It was just having stuff that is like used for nostalgia and spectacle aspects. And if you guys don't know it by now, Disney, I'm not a fan of with when they do that. And they did that. They pulled a nostalgia and spectacle card the same way they do it with Star Wars and Marvel and most other Disney stuff. And it's just annoying, you know, because I had to sit through two hours and ten minutes of spectacle and nostalgia and nothing more. And Disney just jerking off Mary Poppins. And it's just kind of annoying because, again, I want more. I wanted this to be an actual good film that I could rewatch. And unfortunately, it's a film that... It had so much potential. It really did. It could have modernized Mary Poppins a little bit, enough to where it was like, oh wow, that's interesting. Instead of showing the side to her where it was kind of falling. She is narcissistic. She isn't exactly all for equality. And it's just one of those things where these flaws can easily be seen in today's world. And, you know, in 1964, it's fine rewatching it because you get it. It's during that time period. But in 2018, it's like, bah, you know, it doesn't make any sense. So, again, it's just all these flaws for me personally. And for me personally, why this film, it's a mixed bag. I get it. From a technical aspect, there are some cool aspects. And I definitely can see Mary Poppins fans and children alike liking this film. But, again, for me personally, I do have to say that the flaws just kind of make it something that I'm not going to be revisiting. And for me personally, Mary Poppins Returns, I will be giving a 3 out of 5 star rating, which still good old Frank's hot sauce rating, so I mean, you know, it's it's okay. You know, it's some it's not a film where I'm like, it's terrible, but it's also not a film where I'm like, go see it. It's a film where it's the middle of the road, so I'm curious to hear you guys saw stuff. Mary Poppins Returns, was it the return to Mary Poppins or the world of Mary Poppins, I should say, or is it a film that was like meh to you? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. Also, I have to say, this was the first film where I actually got to take part in Cinema Score. Cinema Score, uh, you know, for most of you know, it's where, you know, the audience gets to rate the film. And I got to do so with this film. Uh, you know, it was the first time I guess they went to our theater. And it was cool. You know, it was a cool experience. So I just felt like I would tell you guys I thought it was cool. Now, they probably weren't happy with the rating I gave it because, you know, on my scale, three to five, it's meaning it's okay. 
but on their scale, a three out of five is a D minus. So I had to give them a D. So I guess uh, Disney's not going to be too happy with that. But anyways, they won't care. Guys, again, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And as always, open the subscription, notification bell, and I'll catch you guys later.